I'm Neil Cardwell, and uh, I'm here, as he said, to talk about Packadrill, which is a tool for scriptable network stack testing from the sockets layer all the way down to packets on the wire. And this is joint work done with my colleagues at Google. So what's the problem we're trying to tackle? Well, um, testing network stacks can be difficult. And um, we've found with our experience, uh, mostly with TCP, that we needed a tool to help in various phases. Um, uh, first of all, we needed something to help when we were developing new features. Basically, we wanted a way to write black box unit tests for these new features. Uh, we found we wanted something that could do uh, regression testing. And we found that we needed something with more precision than NetPer for application load tests or testing in production. Uh, in particular, we, we've done a lot of work in TCP loss recovery and congestion control. And to test those well, you need, of course, packet loss and delay variation and things like that. But of course, when you have a test with those elements, then the noise can overwhelm any uh, improvement um, or am make, make it difficult to detect the exact um, effect of your change, basically. Um, in addition, we found we needed a tool for troubleshooting. So let's say we saw a problem in the wild, and we have a system called trace and a packet trace, but we want to be able to uh, replay those and basically add instrumentation to figure out exactly what went wrong. So we found we wanted a tool to help us with all those things. Um, and in addition, um, we found that we wanted a tool that could help us test uh, several aspects of network stacks. Um, of course, we want to test correctness. Uh, for example, is the state machine handling all of those tricky to reach uh, corner cases well? Uh, we care about performance. Um, if we push a change, we want, and, or we're experimenting with a change and something gets slow, we want to know why did it get slow? What algorithm did we break? Um, and of course, we also care about security. We want to know how does our network stack handle malicious messages, and we want to make sure that we're testing that with every software release. Uh, so to help with all these, we built a scripting tool, uh, which we call Package Rail. Um, so here's a sketch of the design of the, the language. Basically, it's fairly simple. Um, it has four types of statements. Uh, first and foremost, of course, there are packets. Uh, for this, we used a syntax that's basically like TCP dump, since most people are familiar with that. Um, with packets, you can specify both the inbound packets that the tool should inject into the kernel under test, and also the outbound packets that you expect the kernel to send, and exactly what bits you expect to be in those packets. And we support TCP packets, UDP packets, and uh, incoming ICMP packets to test things like path MTU discovery. Um, for system calls, the second type of statement, uh, we used a syntax that's like strace, since most people are familiar with that, uh, at least in the Linux world. Um, so the, with uh, system calls, you can specify both the system call to invoke and its inputs, and then also the output that you expect to come out of that system call. Uh, we support blocking and non-blocking system calls. Uh, the third type of statement we support is a shell command. Um, mostly, you can use this for configuring your system. Let's say you want to set a particular syscall value and then test how the kernel works with that. Um, but you can also use it for um, inspecting the machine with netstat or ss or something like that to see what the machine looks like after you've sent these packets. Um, the fourth type of statement that the language supports is a uh, scripting language. Right now, just Python would be trivial to extend to others. But this basically allows you to make assertions about the internal state of the socket, which is exported using a socket option called TCP info, which is available on both uh, Linux and FreeBSD. So here's a quick example to, give, to make this more concrete. Um, so this is an example test script for TCP fast retransmit, um, which many of you are probably familiar with. Um, so here is the full script. This is a pretty representative script. Um, the first thing to notice about this is that there are no IP addresses, no port numbers, um, and uh, that has the advantage that most uh, test scripts can basically be run in, in IP, with IPv4 or IPv6 or in a dual stack mode where you're using an AFI NAT6 socket for IPv4 traffic. So basically, typically you can run with all three addressing worlds using the same script, which is nice. Um, the second thing to notice is that um, Basically, there are nice, easy-to-read relative sequence numbers in here. So 
underlying that is an engine inside the tool that basically handles a lot of the runtime variation that you'll see between TCP connections that are essentially doing the same thing. But of course, on any given run, they'll have different sequence numbers, different TCP timestamps, different ports, different IP addresses, et cetera. All of that complexity is, is abstracted away to make the script a little easier to read and write. So, so let's walk through this. Um, one thing to notice, of course, is that every line is timestamped. Over here on the left, there are timestamps in seconds. Um, you can use either absolute timestamps or relative, a couple different options. Here, these are all relative. Um, so the test starts out by doing a couple socket uh, system calls. Of course, you'll recognize these as the standard system calls to set up a TCP listening connection. Here, we specify that the script says you should make these calls and that they should succeed and return zero. So then it gets more interesting, and I've color-coded things to try to make it a little more legible here. So um, the blue, uh, blue color indicates incoming packets into the kernel under test, and the red color indicates outgoing packets out from the kernel under test, and then the green indicates some um, code that's making assertions about um, a TCP info. So we start out here with an incoming blue uh, SYN packet, and then of course, um, so we, when TCP, when package rail sees that, it injects that into the kernel. Um, and then next, of course, we see a red outbound SYNAC packet. So when package rail sees this, it sniffs for the next outbound packet for the connection under test and verifies that it, the bits are all correct. And if they're not, of course, it flags an error and dies. Um, and then we sort of continue in the same vein. So we, we inject the ACK that completes the three-way handshake. The server accepts the connection. Then we have the, a, an example of a little uh, TCP info um, poking around that you might do. So basically we assert that the send congestion window is 10 packets, which is the initial default for Linux these days. Um, and then we have the application write uh, 4,000 bytes, which with this MSS will turn into four packets. So we have the red outgoing packets that we expect to see on the wire. Um, we verify that those come out. Then we, we are basically trying to test TCP fast retransmit, so we need to sort of emulate a scenario where one of the packets was lost, and so what we'll see come back is some duplicate acknowledgments. So we inject those blue duplicate acknowledgments and then verify that outcomes the red fast retransmit of what the sender presumes is missing data. So this is sort of a, a, a typical example of the kind of test case we have uh, and that we use on a daily basis. So let's talk a little bit about the implementation of the tool. Um, you can use it to test, and we do use it to test real kernels on real hardware, and the tests run in real time. Um, there's a little bit of flexibility here. There are two basic modes that you can use. One is um, local testing on a single machine. And for this, you can use a TUN virtual network device that's supported on um, many operating systems. Um, and that's nice because it allows you to do all your work on a single machine. Um, and this allows you to test the sockets layer, the TCP and IP layers. But you can also, if you want, you can do remote testing to have that traffic travel over uh, a real LAN and to your real physical NIC. And then, of course, that allows you to, try to test the driver, the NIC hardware itself, any offload mechanisms like checksum offloading, TSO, GSO, LRO, GRO, all that kind of um, stuff. Um, also, uh, as I mentioned, you can um, run tests with IPv4, IPv6, IPv4 mapped IPv6. Um, that is dual stack. And in almost all cases, you can take a, a simple test script like this and run it in all three modes. Um, when you wouldn't be able to do that is if, for example, the test involved ICMP, because um, ICMP is a little bit different between IPv4 and IPv6. Um, so we started out with this tool on Linux, of course, because that's what Google uses, but we've also ported it to FreeBSD, OpenBSD, NetBSD, and um, we think it would be pretty straightforward to to port to any Unix operating system that has a lib pcap implementation, uh, and most systems do, since that's the library that TCP dump uses for sniffing packets. Um, and the tool is uh, GPL version two, same as the Linux uh, kernel. And uh, we've posted it online. I'll give you the URL at the end of the talk. So. To summarize our experiences with Packadrill, um, we've been using it to test go the Google production Linux kernel for about a year and a half now. Um, over the time, we've found and used it to find and fix about 10 bugs in um, the official version of Linux. Um, 
We've also used it uh, to, during development, to develop five uh, significant Linux TCP features. Um, TCP fast open is one. Uh, here the idea is you put some data in the SYN that initiates the connection. So for example, in an HTTP connection, you can put your get in the very first SYN so you don't have to wait a whole round trip time to establish the connection. Thanks. Uh, another is uh, TCP uh, tail loss probes, uh, which we've written an internet draft about, and that's also in the official version of Linux now. Um, We've used it for testing TCP with forward error correction, uh, and we wrote a SIGCOM paper this year about that. Uh, we used it for re-implementing uh, FRTO from scratch, uh, which gave us some performance improvements and the uh, code is much simpler now. We also used it to implement the TCP early retransmit RFC in Linux. So um, a few words about the test suite that we've built up. So. It's, uh, it's pretty large and growing, so as of January we had 266 test scripts, and when you consider the three different addressing modes we support, that gives you 657 test cases. Um, you know, it's significantly bigger even just six months later now in June. Um, we find that the results are pretty reproducible. Um, we've measured uh, the rate of spurious failures uh, due, due to jitter to be about one in 2,500. Um, and that's basically at the current default uh, timing tolerance of four milliseconds. So there's basically a tolerance that says, okay, well, if you expect an event to happen at 100 milliseconds, if it happens within four milliseconds of that particular time, then we consider that to be okay, and the test passes. Uh, obviously, the rate of failures you're gonna get due to jitter is, depends on how tight you wanna make that tolerance. Um, and we've found that um, the results are, are pretty quick. We can run all, all 657 test cases that we had in January in 26 minutes, so an average of 2.4 seconds per test case. Um, and that quick turnaround time is nice because that allows us to basically run our entire TCP test suite uh, every time we make a, test, a change to TCP. Before we even send out the code for review, we can make sure that it doesn't break any tests, you know, just standard unit testing stuff, but now for your network stack. So in conclusion, um, we've found package really useful. Um, we hope you will too. So we've uh, put it up on code.google.com as open source. Um, and um, what you'll find up there is the full code for the package rule tool, uh, an example test script for each of the supported operating systems. Um, and more tests for Linux will be uh, coming to that repository soon. We'd like to take as many of our tests that we do internally uh, and post those online as well. It just takes time. Um, and uh, of course, other code and test contributions are welcome. There's a mailing list. Feel free to send patches or anything like that. And um, have fun. Thank you. I have a question. Is it possible to use Packet Drill to emulate uh, activity of some applications. Like you said, it can work with sockets, but sockets are being opened by particular apps. So emulate these apps. Yeah, um, I think it would be pretty straightforward to extend it to work with applications as well. We haven't, um, haven't spent any time on that. But yeah, the, in remote mode, the, ver the, the package drill process that's running on the remote machine doesn't make a whole lot of a, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of dependencies on exactly what's happening on the client side. It just needs to have the script that says what packets it needs to send and what to expect. So I think it would be straightforward to extend to general application testing. If you have a browser or a web server or something like that and you want to use this to, to poke holes in the, in the implementation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, nah, sorry, Dave Holland from Harvard. Uh, sort of relatedly, um, you have a remote mode. How hard would it? How hard is it, or would it be, to drive more than one machine at one, more than one virtual, presumably machine at once, um, from the same script? Yeah, I think just straightforward matter of programming, I guess. Um, what's that? Is there a particular application you have in mind? Well, I there are certain mostly at this point mostly legacy um, sort of infrastructure applications that require that that involve networks of, um, you know, local networks of multiple machines that are basically impossible to test and you don't really want to run them on your own, necessarily want to run them on your own network. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And setting up test environments for this is a major pain. So there's just, 
I keep hoping that some solution will come along that's okay. relatively easy to deal with. Okay. Uh, you say that it's, um, at the moment it's constrained to TCP, UDP, and ICMP. That's right. Is that, a, is that a hard constraint or is it just a matter of writing a little more code? Yeah, it's just a matter of writing more code. I think um, SCTP or something like that would be pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, it was pretty easy to generalize to UDP, for example, and um, obviously SCTP is more complicated, but straightforward, I think. The obvious alternative to this sort of testing is uh, that you just write a script that simply sort of injects packets and record timing. You don't check timing, just record timing. And then get a timing, you know, trace and analyze that offline to tell if it's, you know, pass or not, right? And your testing, sort of your timing testing is in line with your script. Uh, what is sort of the, what do you think is the main benefit of this kind of testing versus simply sort of just, you know, inject some packets and record the timing and analyze that offline, which is, I guess, a more traditional way of testing this kind of stuff. Right. Um, I think the, the main advantage here is that when you're writing, it's particularly useful when you're writing a new feature and you want to test specific cases um, and you want to make sure that you, that you are exercising specific parts of the algorithm. And of course, you, you can do something um, uh, more automated, but y you aren't sure exactly what parts of the code you're going to be testing um, and you aren't sure that you're going to get to the parts of the code that you think are important. Um, I think it's comp I think this kind of explicit unit testing is complementary to the kind of trace analysis that you're mentioning and also the sort of um, automated and informal methods that the folks at Stanford um, have have great make great progress on so I think it's complementary thank you